A little girl is desperately looking for her mother. What do you think happened to your mom? I don't really know. But it's her mom who's lost. Disappearing on the 4th of July as fireworks filled the sky over Troy, Alabama. She was scared. She was worried about something happening to her. And now a cloud of suspicion hangs over her ex-boyfriend. She told me if anything happened to her, make sure y'all check him. Layla Faulkner was a smart, pretty, outgoing young woman with a bright future. She was a straight A student. She was valedictorian of her class. She wanted the center of attention. Everyone wanted to be around her, all the girls and all. She was like the leader. Layla went away to college in Montgomery, Alabama, but her education got sidetracked. Layla met a man in Montgomery, got pregnant, and had a baby girl. That's our grandbaby, Madison. And Madison adored Layla. Layla and Maddie's dad were never married. In fact, they split before Madison was even born. Layla packed up and went back to her tiny hometown of Troy and moved in with her parents. They were more than happy to help the single mom raise Madison. They would be in a car, they would be singing, and Madison would be singing along, and, and Layla would just jump in and even go into the movies, go into different events for the school. Her mom was there. Back in Troy, Layla meets a new guy, Blaine Graylier. His parents own the sporting goods store in town. His family is highly respected in our town. Are you saying he's from a very affluent family? Yes. Yes. Blaine worked for his mom and dad and seemed to be a good fit for Layla's family, too. Did you like your daughter's boyfriend, Blaine? He was in softball tournaments just about every weekend, you know, and. I'm a big sports fan myself. You know, he, he was a high. Sparks fly, and Layla soon moves in with Blaine. They only dated for about two months before she moved in with him. At first, everything was smooth. It seemed like a match made in heaven. But over time, her parents say the relationship turned ugly. It had gotten real bad, fighting every day. She would call, crying. We went up there a few times. But there's nothing we could really do other than if she would just wanted to come home with us. And she wouldn't. Two days before July 4th, Layla finally calls it quits with Blaine and reluctantly moves back home with her mom and dad. Shortly after the breakup, Layla shakes the tiny town of Troy, making a shocking claim about Blaine on social media. She posted right before she went missing about a breakup between her and Blaine? She posted that her boyfriend was leaving her for another man, said he was gay. Just two days after moving back in, on July 4th, Layla's parents take Madison to watch the fireworks. And Layla goes out with friends. It would be the last time they would see her. Her mother looks back at a troubling text she got from Layla back in April. She writes, I'm scared of BJ. I need you to come get me. Her mom writes back, Layla, what's going on with you two? Layla responds, if something happens to me, it's him. She was scared. She was worried about something happening to her. Layla's parents claim the day she went missing, their daughter and Blaine had been in a terrible text war. In addition to accusing him of leaving her for another man, there were also allegations about money and drugs. Layla's parents admit their daughter was struggling at the time. Layla had demons she was battling. She had an alcohol addiction and she was doing drugs too. At first, the Faulkners were worried, but not panicked. They say Layla had disappeared on short trips before, but after three days and still no word, Layla's parents begin to panic. They rush to the Pike County Sheriff's Department. How did you realize something might have happened to your daughter? She hadn't called or text her mother or anything. Like you said, they talked on a daily basis, you know, even if they had a fuss or argument. And we went up to the sheriff's department to uh, file a missing persons report, and uh, they wouldn't file one. The family says they came in to make a missing persons report on July 7th, but that it wasn't filed. Because of her history, and she's done this before, 
and we told the family to, you know, check with her friends to try to find out that she make sure that she's not out on one of these binges. After checking with family and friends, the Faulkners come up empty. Nobody has seen or heard from Layla. Now the Pike County Sheriff's Department launches an investigation. After no sign of her for so long, you believe something has happened to her now. We started looking into it a little bit more. We still have nothing to say that she was abducted. We have no information actually placing her anywhere other than that property at her parents' house. At that point, Lieutenant Troy Johnson goes back to Layla's shocking post on social media about her former flame. How did her social media post factor into your investigations? We looked at her Facebook posts, and we saw that that day she was talking back and forth with her ex-boyfriend that she just moved out from, and they were kind of arguing back and forth, basically over money and about drugs. Blaine Graylier is now at the center of the investigation. Was Blaine an initial suspect or person of interest? Yes. He first didn't want to come talk to me. He kept trying to say, we need to talk to the last people she was with. And the last people that we knew that she was communicating with was you, only through Facebook Messenger. And I asked him then, would he take a polygraph test? And he agreed. And the results of his polygraph? How did that polygraph test go with Blaine? The examiner's answer was he didn't pass it. And I don't know the questions that were asked. I never got the report for the polygraph test. I also asked him to take a follow-up polygraph test, and he wouldn't do it. There have been several wild stories surrounding Layla's mysterious disappearance, one claiming she was targeted by another man, murdered, and then torched in his truck. I went out there and looked at the truck, and it's been burned up. But as far as any forensic tests on it, the story just didn't pan out. The Faulkner's frustration fuels their heartbreak. All we want is answers. We're so angry because it feels like the sheriff's department's not doing anything. And every time what we think is a tip, they say it's hearsay. hearsay. They you? won't even check it out. The family believes that you haven't done due diligence regarding this investigation. Well, they want to believe everything that's told to them. And if my daughter was missing, I'd want to believe it too. I'd like to give this family some closure. We don't know what happened to her. Layla Faulkner has been missing for almost two excruciating years. She disappeared without a trace on the 4th of July. Her family desperately wants answers. Just tell us where she is. So desperate, Layla's parents have actually taken matters into their own hands, putting up billboards, hiring their own private investigators, and upping the reward. The reward's up to $10,000 now for any information that leads us to finding Layla or her remains. No one has been named an official suspect, but Layla's ex-boyfriend, Blaine Graylier, has been at the center of the investigation. What conversations have you had with Blaine, and do you believe him? When Layla first disappeared, he messaged me on Facebook just about every day. I do believe him. I don't think he had anything to do with it. But I think he knows about it, and he knows what happened. As far as him actually doing it, I don't, I don't know. But I do believe he knows about it 100%. Now, in this Crime Watch Daily exclusive, Blaine sits down with us for his very first televised interview to set the record straight. You haven't talked to anyone else. Why talk to us? I just know deep down that I have not done anything, or I don't know anything. And that's all I really need to say about it. I just want the family to get answers. What type of relationship did you and Layla have? We told each other everything. So did Layla break up with you? It was a mutual thing, but it was more of me of breaking up with her. Blaine says Layla was a beautiful girl, but claims she was haunted by a dark secret. He says drugs drove them apart. Because of the situation or the habits that she was going, was getting into, and I didn't really know it was that bad. And Blaine tells me he's now the one haunted by Layla's disappearance. What went through your mind when you found out Layla was missing? A bunch of names came to my head, and uh, and I ran, ran them by Miss Susan, and they checked out one or two. They just don't know who picked her up from the house. 
Miss Susan is Layla's mother. Blaine says he still talks to her regularly with hopes he can help find out what happened to Layla. But if Blaine's so worried, I had to ask, why hasn't he been more active? Did you participate in any of the searches for Layla? No, I didn't. Why not? I stayed back. I told Miss Susan this. I stayed back because I was being considered a suspect. So I wanted to st stay my distance so they, uh, people wouldn't think that I'm trying to be too close to it and trying to figure out what's all going on. So you took the polygraph test? Correct. And you were told that you lied? Right. Then they called you back to take another? It was inconclusive, the and test that I took. You refused because? Because there's a discrepancy in what two different people told me. And one of the biggest questions hanging over this case, Layla's shocking post on social media, claiming they broke up because Blaine ran off with another man. Why do you think she posted those things on social media? Talking about you, being gay? There's nothing I can say except that I'm not gay. The only thing I can think is she was upset and she didn't want to be around the house. She just wanted to go. I, I don't want to speculate, but I would think that she was probably wanting to go go out and do things she shouldn't be doing. But what about those text messages Layla sent to her mom and dad, warning them about Blaine just before she vanished? There are text messages prior to Layla's disappearance mm -hmm. of her texting her mom saying that she's afraid of you and if something happens to her, to investigate you. That's crazy. I don't know anything about that. Did Miss Susan tell you that? No. You talk to her every day? Just about every day. How does that make you feel? It hurts my heart a lot. It, that's awful. I would never hurt her, ever. So you wouldn't have harmed, killed, dismembered, or no. hid Layla's remains? Absolutely not. Did you have an argument and blow up and something happened? No, not at all. So you're saying you and God know you didn't do it. Right. Do you feel you've been convicted in the court of community public opinion? I do, but like I told you earlier, I don't care what anybody thinks anymore. God's the only person that knows. What do you think could have happened to Layla? I don't know. I have no clue. The whole thing comes down to is who picked her up at her parents' house. We'll have some answers, but we don't know who that is. Blaine tells me he's tortured every single day. If Layla were here right now and you had one more chance to talk to her, one more conversation, or moment together, what would you say to her? I'd tell her I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we broke up because you wouldn't be in the situation, she wouldn't be in the situation missing right now. And I, I would tell her I love her and I would, Take it all, take all of this back and start from day one. Just recently, one of the billboards the Faulkners put up to find Layla was stabbed with two butcher knives. Police call it a random act. Layla's parents believe it's a message. Do you think that it's random or do you think it's connected to Layla's disappearance? I think I, it's very personal. You don't just walk around town with two butcher knives and start stab stabbing a sign. Lieutenant Johnson says he continues to track down any and all leads, including this one, a wild story claiming Layla was murdered and chopped up here in these woods. What's significant about this property here? This is the property where the family got the information that where they believed that she was killed at and she was uh, dismembered and buried up underneath this house right here. Have you found anything to lead you to believe that's true? No. It's been nearly two years since Layla disappeared, and the Faulkners are coming to grips with the fact that they may never see their daughter again. What do you need, Mom, right now? I need closure. I know these people hurt her, and I just, just tell us where she is. That's all we want, just tell us where she is. As for Madison, she just wants her mom to come home. Yeah. What do you talk to God about when it comes to your mom? I just want him to find her and see, um, and I just want to see her again. 
Anyone with information about Layla's whereabouts can contact the Pike County Sheriff's Office at 1-334-566-4347.